Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and today I'm going to talk about tension. We're going to talk a little bit about tension. Um, as you can see, I have this quilt on the frame in behind me. It's been there for a little bit because I was gone for a few weeks, and then I was gone for a few days. It's ba I'm back in town. Um, I, we're in fake spring that they call it here in Cleveland. Um, it's April 1st and it's snowing outside. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I got to get this quilt done. At least I, it keeps me inside. Um, had uh, a glorious four days in California and I saw uh, flowers and the sun and I wore shorts and now I'm back to freezing in my basement. But um, hey, it gives me a chance to connect with all of you. And like I said, we're going to talk tension. Um, I... And it, this is how I test my tension. Um, I'm pretty good with tension now. I've been using my machine long enough where I can um, usually tension it by just pulling pulling the top thread. I get pretty close. Um, even doing that, I'm going to test tension off to the sides of my quilt. Um, the quilt that's loaded on right now, um, this is one of my clients. She still sends me quilts since I moved away from Oregon. Um, does some fabulous stuff, but she does self-binding. So, you know, we're used to testing our tension out off the, to the side and just stitching. Well, I can't do that with her quilts because... She's going to use that to bind. She's going to fold and self-bind with that backing. So I can't use her backing to test on. So um, I originally, this is how I kind of made my own sandwich to put off to the side of the quilt. And, um, and then I just really like that because when you don't have all that batting or you don't, or you don't have enough backing to kind of test tension on the sides, you can always load something else up. Um, in this case, I have some scraps of fabric that I cut off from other things. I think this was from a virtual class I taught. So I have one long piece. Um, I don't even know how wide this is. We're going to say it's uh, a footish, or maybe a little more than a foot wide. Um, it just has to be long enough where I can connect it to this back bar and then I can connect it to my belly bar, depending on how you've um, loaded your system. And then um, I have just a strip of batting, and I have some fabric. You're also kind of getting a sneak peek into my controlled chaos that lives here. Um, these are all uh, thread colors I might use. So I pulled them before we started. Um, and I have bobbin threads and top threads. I'm definitely using white. So I have the, um, I'm going to run out of white. So I got my backup cone. I pre-filled some bobbins. I'm going to use bottom line bobbins in the white area. Or um, Yeah, so these are bottom line bobbins. I know because they're purple. I don't know if you can see that, but my purple bottoms are bottom line. Um, this is 623 silver, my favorite color. And it goes really great with white. And then I'm going to be using So Fine when I use any of the blue colors. So I, I pre-wound some So Fine bobbins. Um, most of this is going to be done with white thread, but then there is some silver and some or uh, some blue and some teal inside the quilt itself. So um, that's when I'll switch. And when I switch to those, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to test my tension, get tension correct on that. Um, I still am going to use the Toa gauge. Now, <clears throat> I always read Facebook and like the blogs. I call the I call Facebook the blogs. I'm always reading Facebook, and it's so interesting. Someone will ask a question, and then like five people will tell them, you shouldn't do it that way. That's not the way I do it. You should do it my way. That just like rubs me the wrong way. I use a 10, I use the Toa gauge. I like the Toa gauge. Should everybody use the Toa gauge? Not if you don't want to. You get to, you get to be like, you're your own long armor. If you have a, a way you're doing something, continue to do it. Like I show you the way I like to do it. You can try it. If you don't like it, don't do it. If you don't try it, you don't even have to try it. I it, I get really frustrated when people are like, oh no, my way's better. There's no better way. It's all the way that is most comfortable for you. And I don't know. I don't, you can tell, I get a little frustrated. So I'm going to be using the Toa for my bobbin. I always use the Toa for my bobbin. If you do the drop test, that's great. There's great videos out there. Jamie Wellen has a great tension video with it. I just like the Toa. I know my bobbins are the same every time. I don't have to drop it. I just click it in, pull it. We're there. So I will tension this there. Um, and then I will, uh, I'm using Omni thread on top. But I might use some Omni and then grab another spool just so I can show you the difference. I'm also going to start out by 
pulling my thread purposely, I'm gonna take it out of those tension discs and stitch with it so I can show you all what that's gonna look like because that is another thing. And I know I talked in the, um, in the Frequent Last Questions video. That's something we see all the time. People don't understand what's going on and it's all because we're not having any tension up here in our tension discs. So the hook is just pulling all that thread down. So I want you to see what that's gonna look like. Um, and I don't, who knows? I think I, I might change some thread, I don't know. I want you to be able to look at this and then troubleshoot when you go and do yours, uh, do yours at home. And remember, with the handy quilters, with our machines, we're gonna tension that bobbin and then we're not gonna touch it again. So, um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna use the Toa gauge. Um, recently I was teaching with a co, I was co-teaching with uh, Mickey, who's another educator. I'll tag or I'll link her down below um, to her Instagram or Facebook. Uh, she'll be linked somewhere. Uh, she does a lot of vintage stuff. Um, we have pretty much opposite aesthetics and we've we found out like on the road, we also do a lot of things different. I load in classic view, she loads in clear view, she likes a tighter bobbin, I like a looser bobbin. So all of those are factors that are gonna change how tight this tension is up top. Um, so it's a, it's an, that's another question I get. What are your tension numbers? Because I wanna use yours. It, it doesn't work that way because you, you would have to have the same bobbin You'd have to have the same thread. Like everything would have to be the same for all those numbers to to be the to work the same. To to have two machines that my top tension is 80 when I'm using Omni and yours is also 80 when you're using Omni. So there's so many factors that go into all of this. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to find your perfect numbers and play with those tensions and um, and how I test it. Um, these are super clamps. I think they have my name on them. Um, these are machine specific. So are, are frame specific. So these are the super clamps for the gallery frame because I have a gallery frame. Um, and these work by sit, by put, or coming onto this bar and clamping around. They're super tight. And so you can clamp everything on. I don't want to clamp onto this quilt or I would. Um, and usually I use these. I'll use these off to the side of my quilt and I really like these. They hold everything tight. I can clamp on really quick, stitch, 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 and then pop it off whenever I'm not using it. Um, but this is a big quilt and I don't have a ton of room on my back bar to get this on. I could squeeze it over there, but, um, but I just recently found, I'm going to pop these down here. Um, these are, uh, so tights, Magnum, um, magnets. They're small, so they're easy to get on and off. But, um, you know, people are like, oh, I'll go to uh, the store and get a big long magnet strip. So nothing wrong with that. Um, what I hear from them is that it's too hard to get off. So once they put their quilt on, they can't really take it back off. I've heard that Oh, well, it clamped my finger pretty hard and then uh, my finger hurt for a few days. Um, these are small so they can go on and they're small so they can get come off. So um, you can you can load quilts with these. Um, I'll, I'm going to be honest here. I've used them to load up a small quilt. Wasn't a big fan, but other people have used them and love them. So again, there's a hundred ways to do it all. I'm just telling you the way I, I like to do it. I do use red snappers. You can see my red snappers here. Um, I do have the small sew tights. These are, there's uh, like three or four different sizes now, but I like these small ones. I leave them off to the side of my, um, of my top bar and my back bar to hold those leaders on while I'm spinning it, when I'm, you know, turning around. So they're not flopping down and everything. Um, but these, these bigger ones I found work really good to just load up this really quick tension thing. So I'm gonna bring you over to the side of my machine. I'm gonna show you how I load up the fabric and I'm gonna, again, use these sew tights, but you could use whatever, um, those clamps. There's uh, easy easy grass clamps that are um, smaller than the super clamps. The super clamps are big. The easy grass clamps are probably about this big and have a handle. Again, frame specific. So you have to make sure you're buying the correct one. But um, I'm going to load some fabric off to the side. We'll stitch, we'll play and um, kind of talk about tension and how to fix it. But um, we'll see you back here in a second. All right, so here we are at the side of my quilt. 
Um, I have I took the bungees off because I'm gonna load something up and stitch here, so I don't need them on for this. Um, this quilt is all being done free motion, so it's not like I have to drag and drop or do any of that. Um, remember, I don't actually bungee to my on my quilt, my backing and my stuff. I've made a webbing strip that I click or that I um, clamp my clamp to, and then my strip is pinned onto the side, and now I can use um, my bungee grabbers. And that's how I attach my sides. Um, these bungee grabbers, I did add to my to my frame. Um, I think they come in sets of two, so I had to get three sets. Totally worth it because with one hand, I can get those bungees on and off. It's one of my favorite additions um, to my frame. So I'm going to take that off. Um, I'm sorry you can't see me, but I think that it's more important to be able to see what I'm doing. So I have my blue fabric. It's the longer piece because I need it to attach here and come all the way and attach to my belly bar. So it doesn't, this is just a solid. And again, this is just a scrap of something. And um, you can see my Magnum so tights right here. Um, this is the bar to my um, highlight. And I have, um, I don't know if you can see my magnetic bowls with my pins in them whenever I load with pins, but I can also put anything magnet. I have my, um, uh, my uh, Hugo's Amazing Tape. Um, when I take it off a spool, I stick it here so I don't lose it because it's see-through. So these, these poles do uh, work wonders for things. So I'm gonna put my, um, my fabric right here on the back and I like to roll it up a little bit. You don't have to, it would work both ways. And I'm gonna pop on a sew tight. And you could hear, I mean, just clicking it down, you can hear how tight that is. And for the back one, I put the third one on. And now I can get this nice and taut. Do you see how I can see how that's laying there? And I'm just pulling it. I'm, go, I'm going under my top bar, over my belly bar. <clears throat> and I'm not going to... Um, use the sew tights on here yet because I'm going to put the batting on and then put the top on and then I'll pull it tight and do that. So I have my back on. Now I can just put my batting on. And um, do I do this all the time? No, because if I have plenty of room off to the side, I usually will just stitch it right here. Same, same process. I see something gold. Um, I'll do the same process um, when I stitch out and do all that and to test, but I'll just do it off to the side of the quilt. Um, but here's my batting, and now I will get my top. And again, it's just a strip of uh, fabric. This happens to be purple. It was a strip from another class. <clears throat> so now that everything's on there, I will pull it tight or taut. And you don't want it too tight. You want it like, you know, how your quilt top is going to lay. And then I can get my other two because they come in a pack of five. And now I have my um, little piece that I'm going to test on loaded. Um, here's my ruler base because I always have my ruler base on. Um, you don't have to have a ruler base on. It's not going to change anything. I always, I'll go down and base this because this will be a tester that I'll use a lot now. So I can um, <clears throat> just go into my stitches. And I'm just going to, I like personal preference. I based at five stitches an inch because I like to stop needle down. And I'm not going to worry about tension yet. I'm just basting the square down because I want to see, um, one, my batting's not as big as my, um, my other fabric. And because we're not clamped on, you can see it wants to pull, which is fine. I mean, it's just a piece of test fabric. I'm not looking for anything fancy. All right, so just by basting, I can already tell 
that my top tension is too tight. And I can see little orange dots. I'll take a picture of this and then um, post a picture here. All right, so I brought you in closer so you can see. So here I just based, I just basted the side of the um, sample piece. And I will take, like I said, I'm going to insert those pictures. And I can see a little bit of orange. And then if I flip this over... The back looks pretty good. I just see the orange, um, the orange stitches. I don't really see any gray, and I purposely pulled a gray out so I could do this with a with um, contrasting thread so we can see. Um, in real life, if I'm going to use a gray on top, I'm using a gray on the bottom. If I'm going to use an orange on top, I'm going to use an orange on the bottom. I match my threads. It's personal preference, and it's something that um, it's one stressor that I don't have to worry about. Um, if tension gets off a little bit, if I was using gray on the back, I wouldn't be able to see where it's picking these these uh, these orange pieces up because it's really, really small. But I do see that the top tension is probably a little tight. And um, I have the infinity, so I'm going to go up and just loosen my tension. Right now, my tension is set at 80. So I might go down to 70. Um, that's probably enough. Remember, that's going to be kind of like a half a turn on um, Amara, Avante, and Forte. Um, but now I'm really going to test my tension. So I will move my um, stitches back to 10 because that's where I like to stitch. I'm going to turn my gears off to put it to put my machine in pro stitcher mode so i went to pro stitcher on my um i'm in my pro stitcher tab or in my pro stitcher screen i went to the pro stitcher file um tapped gears on my ribbon now my crosshairs are purple and now i'm in free motion mode because i want to put everything the way i'm gonna it's gonna stitch if i were doing it edge to edge i would test the tension with my gears on because you know maybe changing those gears can change something so needle down needle up I will move my machine away so I can get that bobbin up. I'll take a few stitches and then I can also just hit the star and do my little tie off there. Oops, I kicked the camera, sorry. I'm going to stitch this way a little bit. And even there, I can see that it's still tight. I can still see orange. So, um, so what this is telling me, if I can see the bobbin on top, because remember, the bobbin is perfect. I put it in my toe gauge, I adjusted it, it's bottom line thread, and it, my toe gauge reads 190. If I can see the bobbin on top, that means my top thread is pulling too hard. It, they're not having it, they're not playing good, they're not playing good together, and we want that nice lock right in the middle of our quilt. Can you see that? Um, and what's happening is the bobbin is pulling, or the top is pulling that bobbin up, so it's not getting a really nice lock. So um, if you can see the bobbin on top, your top thread is pulling too hard. If you can see the top thread on the bobbin, or on the bottom, then your top isn't pulling hard enough. We're only adjusting the top here. We're not adjusting that bobbin. We've already done our drop test or we've used the TOA and we know that bobbin is perfect. So I'm going back in and I will adjust this down some more. And I haven't even got into my part where I actually will stitch some circles and stuff, but I can see orange. And there's still a little bit. <clears throat> and this, if again, if this were gray, I wouldn't have been able to see it. So now, looking much better. So I'm going to do some circles. And then I stitch away. And I just stitch up. So I don't see any orange. No orange there. Let's see. Oh, there's a little bit of orange, especially at these at the apex of these circles. Um, so I'm going to uh, adjust it down a little bit. I don't see any gray on the bottom. So this is why I like to do it off to the side, too, because I can just fold this over and see. Um, and again, I will take some pictures of all this so you can see it up close. I don't see any gray here. So it's not it's um, it's still too tight on the top. I don't want to see gray on the back, but um, it just means that 
I can loosen it up a tiny bit more because there's a little bit there. I'm all right, I'm down to 50. So I started at 80. Remember, they're bigger adjustments when you're doing the top tension. No gray down here no orange up here and i went from 80 to 40 and now my tension looks good so that's how i adjust tension and so again this is omni thread on top so now my omni thread my omni number is 40 and um i did just have my machine serviced it was uh, time for him to go in and have a spa treatment so um usually things you know they do some updates and machine software update and all that and um so all my presets were gone. So now I'm at 40, so I can come in on my machine, I can actually go into my settings and set a preset. So I'm gonna change this preset. And now I can just hit a button and it sets my tension for this thread. And Omni is always my preset number one. I'll press one more time. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. And that is how I'm going to check my tension. Now, I told you I was going to stitch some and take this out of the tension discs. So I'm popping my thread out of the tension disc. It still looks like it's there, but it's not. Uh oh, I want to make it look like it's there. <laughs> so it looks like it's in the discs. I'll take a picture of this. But it's not. If I pull this, I can tell that it is not in those discs. It's pulling too easy. So I'm going to stitch. And you might, ha you might actually hear some clicking. We'll find out. So this actually didn't do it very bad. Um, but we can see some of the gray thread. Can you see that on the camera? Oh, yeah, you can. So um, there's a little bit of gray thread. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it'd be. I think it might have seated itself back in there. So we're going to try this. There's less guides on the Infinity, so it's kind of hard to do this and not have it, how the guides line up, it will kind of keep it taut. Oh, there we go. So I could feel like some like tugging and hear like a thunk, thunk. Now look, do you see that mess down there? This is, if you have something like this, your thread is not in that tension disc. It probably won't be this bad because I just went and missed the disc totally. But um, anytime you have a lot of thread on the bottom, you probably miss threading or uh, seating that thread in that tension discs so it's really important like when we when we teach uh low or uh, when i teach like machine basics i'm going to stitch again right next to it because i put it into that tension disc and i can fold this over nice stitches not in the tension to stitches. Um, and when we teach like uh, threading the machine, we really go over getting that thread in that tension disc and people still don't do it. And then I have them, if, and it, this is something you can try at home, take the thread out of that disc and let me see, I'm gonna pull my thread up. When you're at home, take your thread out, and usually I will pull from here, right under my pigtails or right above it, but pull some thread and then take it out of the discs and pull that thread and feel the difference between the two. Because um, I, I, I don't know, I feel like I always pull a little thread out before I stitch, and um, I think I just naturally do it now, but you can feel the tension when it's through that disc and then you don't have the headache of trying to go back in and fix it later. 
Um, I'm going to show you one other thing while we're here because I get the question all the time and the, it's how to pull up your bobbin thread after you've stitched. And the, again, just the way I do it, you can do it any way you want. Um, to get the bobbin thread up at the beginning, I'm going to needle down, needle up, move my machine away. I need to get my thread under the foot, so I'm going to let go here and pull them both. I always take a few stitches and then I use my star button and now I have my tie off and then I can stitch. And when I'm done, I will do a tie off and I usually do like two more stitches. I don't, I'm not a thread barrier. I'm not going to go back and um, leave a tail and bury that just not me i don't have that time in my life um now i also don't put things in shows and do all that stuff i put it in the show of i take a picture and put it on instagram um but i'm not putting stuff into shows if i were i'd probably take a little more time but i find that i'm i mean most of our quilts are utility quilts we put them on the couch and the dogs lay all over them and they get washed a ton and no threads are coming out we've all ripped out threads now this these come out really easy because there's nothing to hold them down. And I could probably scratch these and pull, see how that's just pulling up is because it's not really making the stitch. Um, so I can usually tell in classes, I can walk by and say, oh, you're not in your discs by just looking here. Um, all right, so I've done my tie off. I've done, I've hit my star, done my tie off button. I like, I have mine set to five personal preference. You can set yours to anything. I take a few more stitches. So this is important. I'm going to, I don't like to pull tension through my needle. It's a personal thing. Mickey opposite. She actually checks her tension through her needle. So I'm going to pull some slack. So there we are. I've pulled a lot of slack. So pull some slack, let it go. And I always stop needle down. So I'm gonna have to needle up now. And I was pulling slack from the spool, not from the needle, not trying to pull it from the bottom. So I'm pulling it and just having everything come from the spool. I'm going to move away six to eight inches. All right. And I'm not holding that. I'm not holding that slack anymore. And see how this is the slack I pulled. Basically, I pulled slack out so the tension didn't go through the needle. Now I'm picking that up and I'm going to use my left hand just because that's what I do. I'll come back. I will needle down, needle up at that last stitch I took. I'm not gonna move this hand. The left hand is gonna stay and I'm gonna move my machine away six to eight inches. And there's my bobbin. But you need to go a good six inches away because we're also making a bobbin tail for that next stitch. And now I can come and uh, my top thread broke for some reason, but I don't care because I'm gonna trim those bobbins. And that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to trim that bobbin off. So let me do that again, because that was weird that my top thread broke. Needle down, needle up, pull my bobbin up. And this is basically what we made. This thread tail that comes up nice and easy and I have a nice length. That's what I made by going that six inches away. So I'm going to do a few tie offs. I'm not going to hit my tie off button because I'm just sticking for you all. I'm done. Now I'll get my tie off, do one or two more stitches. This bugs me, so I'm going to trim that. Pull some slack. Move away. Grab that slack and move on back. Now this machine, whatever hand you grab that slack with, you're not allowed to move. So I'm going to keep my left hand right there. And I have that slack wrapped around my finger. And I'm not going to move. I'm going to needle down, needle up, and move away. And it's going to pull that bobbin right up for me. So you should have two bobbin strips, so two pieces of bobbin and one top, and I'm going to tr trim everything right there. This now goes into my thread bag, and I've, ha I've made a bobbin tail, which we can see, maybe. Here's my bobbin tail that we just made. So now I'm, gonna be, it's, I'm easily going to be able to pull that up when we go back and start stitching again. So, um... So that's it. That's how to um, mess with your bobbin. If you see the thread on top, you're pulling too hard on your top thread. We're going to loosen it. And remember, it's righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. So away from you is tightening it. Coming towards you is going to loosen it. And if you see it on the bottom, 
like this, you're out of the tension discs. If you just see some little dots, that means that you aren't pulling, you're not pulling that tug of war tight enough and you need to tighten that top. So we'll see you back here in a second. All right, everyone. So that is how I test my tension out on the side. Um, again, if I have room, I might do that on the side of the quilt. Um, I always make sure that it's three layers. So um, even if I were testing it here on the side of this quilt, I would make sure that I put like a little square or a scrap of fabric on top. I try to match fabric types. So if I was doing a batik top, I grab a little scrap of batik fabric and just um, stitch. You don't need that much room. Usually I can just do some circles. I just stitch up, flip. Um, get my camera out. The Infinity comes with a camera. Um, I don't even have mine on. I just, because I attention a lot by um, Phil now, so I don't need it. I used it all the time at the beginning. Um, but uh, it's a uh, it's an awesome feature. And if I had it on, I would show you. But um, I think we talked about it. Um, I do a series called HQ in the Know for uh, Stitch House Stitch House Texas. So you can look them up on YouTube. Um, they do a lot of fun videos and different things, but I do a series for them called HQ in the Know. And I want to say we talked about it in one of the videos. And if we didn't, we should make a video for it so you all can see that feature. Because it is a really cool feature. Um, that, the thread cutter, and um, I mean, just the preset bobbin alone is worth it for me. But um, yeah, so that's how I t tension the bobbin. Um, remember, if you can see the bobbin on top, your top thread's pulling too hard. If you can see the top thread on the bottom, you're not pulling hard enough. We're only going to adjust the top tension because we've done our drop test or we've used our TOA gauge and we know that that bobbin is perfect. So everything's done up top, big, in big increments, move five, 10 numbers. I had to move 40 numbers. So it's all about getting used to changing that. You're allowed to touch it. Um, there are people out there who are like, oh, I never have to touch mine, blah, blah, blah. They're probably using the same type of thread for everything. I use different bobbin thread. I use different top thread. I mean, you've seen my thread collection. I love thread. I'm going to use whatever I want because I know it's all just an adjustment on that top. Um, I don't use the same thread on the top and the bobbin. In my bobbins, it's going to be so fine. It's going to be bottom line. You can use pre-wounds. There's great pre-wounds out on the market. Whatever you like to do is what you should do. And then just get comfortable doing all this. So thank you so much for joining me. As always, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos come up. Um, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Adam So Fun, and that's S-E-W, and that's everywhere. Uh, what else? Um, I'm trying to think of what's coming up. We might have some really exciting news for... October, but um, I can't tell you that because it, we might have it. I, we have to find out what's going on. I th think we have a meeting tomorrow. When this when this video drops, I'm probably going to be in a meeting talking about some exciting October things, and um, we'll keep you in the know because you have to know what's going on, and thank you all. Hopefully, um, it's not snowing where you are because it is here in Cleveland, and we will see you next week. Um, and I think next week we're going to talk about uh, loading Clearview versus uh, Classic View because I got that question a lot while I was in California. So see you next time, everyone. Bye.